is how to play the game! That is an epic fucking intro, dude. And I have to warn everyone, warning, what you may see right now is going to be absolutely disgusting. Sound good? All right, that's, sounds good to me. Yesterday I did my retrospective marathon. Started around 10.30 a.m. rough, roughly, turned the stream on, I think it turned it on around 10.30ish. And, uh, you know, we went till around 8 o'clock at night, pretty much. It was uh, a pretty long, lengthy event. There's an actual positive update regarding YouTube. So I get an email stating that, you know, one of the videos, of course, was content ID matched, okay? Now, typically when I get an email like this, it says, so whoever this, this person is claiming your video has claimed all the rights to it, and therefore, you know, if you want to dispute this, you can, but, you know, right now you've lost all, you know, you're not, you're not getting a copyright strike or anything like that against your channel, but you've lost all rights to this video, Okay. Well, that's not the email I got, okay? I got an email that said, So, we have identified that there is a piece of copywritten content in the video you uploaded. Uh, this is the company that is claiming that they have the rights to it. But, you still are making money from this video. <gasps> oh my god! However, advertisements for the other company that's claiming some of the rights to this video may also have advertisements on your video. And therefore, there's a revenue split. You are not being penalized whatsoever, copyright-wise, at all against your channel. This is perfectly fine. Uh, you will still make some money, but not the full money on the video. Have a good day. And I read it, I was like... Wait, what? <laughs> like, hold on a second. This is exactly what I've been talking about for years. If you guys remember, this is what I've been mentioning, you know, for so long. Is that YouTube's uh, copyright system is completely broken. That when someone claims a video, somehow they get 100% rights to that video. 100%. Which makes no sense. You know, if I'm, let's say for example, I'm playing a video game. And that video game has a licensed song in it. An actual song that someone else is selling somewhere else, but it was licensed to be in the game. And then YouTube's content ID system identifies, oh, that song's in there, right? What it would do is say, oh, well that person who made that song now makes all the money on your video. They now own your video and have the rights to it. Like, what? wait, what? Just because there's a snippet of a song in my, you know, video that could be an hour long and have a ridiculous amount of content that has nothing to do with that song, that one person now owns all the rights to my entire fucking video? How does that legally make any sense? Good, try, good luck going to court, in a court of law, trying to make that stick, because it never would. The problem is that YouTube systems are all automated and aren't legal. That's just true, they're not. Like, those systems aren't legal at all. It's all just a bunch of horse shit uh, made up to try to protect YouTube's ass so they don't ever get sued. So, stuff like this happens all the time. You know, stuff that's not legal and stuff that makes no legal sense at all. <sighs> okay. But, you know, now I get this email. And it's basically acknowledging, okay, listen. You may have some copywritten content in your video. So we're going to split the revenue with someone else. Holy shit. That's exactly what I've been saying should happen, like, forever. Now, of course, do we know what the revenue split is? Do we know, is it 50-50? Is it 80-20? You know, they said, oh, some ads for a third-party company may appear on your video, and they get they get the revenue from those ads. Doesn't mean that, you know, the, some of the ads are from them, some are from me. What's the split? Who knows? And, of course, there's no way to figure that out. There's no data. There's no information. You can't find that out on YouTube. They don't, they don't give you that data. That's all behind-the-scenes stuff that I guess they determine, again, with their algorithms, their automated algorithms, right? Everything's automated on the fucking website. But, my God, like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, this is actually a positive step in the right direction. It's almost as if, after... You know, five plus years of being completely abusive with their bullshit, YouTube maybe got threatened by someone. Because I'll be honest with you guys, I really don't believe YouTube would ever make a change, a positive change like this, without the threat of legal action. Ow! Why'd you do that? Why did you do that? Why'd you just go to bite mommy? Wow. Alright, so you see what pigs can do. One thing, a lot of people have asked me, you know, now that it's June, are we going to have a new monthly subs goal for the month? Um, we could. Don't get me wrong, we absolutely could do that. Um, however, 
my only real idea of what we could do this month would be to do um, the, the, the idea that I did two months ago that didn't work out. It was the viewer's choice event, all right? So what, we, what it would be is if you guys subscribe to the channel and we hit a monthly goal, and I don't know what the goal would be yet. I haven't even thought about it. But if we hit this monthly goal, all right, what I would do is set up on my forums a thread by which all of you could publicly go to the forums and post up your nominations of a game you'd like to see me do a playthrough of later this year. All right? And I'm sure we would probably get dozens, if not more, nominations for various different games. What I would do is nominate, uh, narrow it down to games that got more than one nomination. So, let's say out of 50, 60 games that get nominated, 10 of them actually got more than one nomination. All right? I would then do a poll by which the public would vote on what game you want to see me play. And whatever wins that poll, I would actually do a playthrough of later this year. Now, the reason that I'm skeptical about doing this as the, the sub-event is because I did this in April, and we didn't it didn't work. Like, in April, I tried to motivate people to subscribe to the channel to do a sub-event, and it didn't work at all. Um, people didn't sub for it. But it's hilarious because people had asked me for years to do this. Phil, why, why are you only doing patron's choice? We don't want patron's choice. You should be doing public, you know, voting for the public. That would definitely motivate people to contribute. Okay, so I did it, and then no one did. <laughs> you see what I mean? Like, I think what it is is we've got a vocal minority of people who maybe are angry that I've always did patrons' choice, so they just didn't want to be patrons. But then when I made it, you know, okay, hit a sub goal, and then we'll do viewers' choice. Oh, I don't want to sub either. It's like, well, then you can't win, you know? Like, that's the whole point. These are these are events that are trying to motivate people to come and be supportive. And if you're not going to be supportive, then what's the point, you know? That was the whole point behind it. So, that's the idea that I have, all right? I don't know about you guys. You know, you let me know what you think. You know, is this a good idea? Should I do it for this month? If that's the case, probably within one to two days here... I'll set up the goal, the sub's goal, and we'll, we'll get it rolling. But if you guys have better ideas, all right, for what I should be doing for a sub goal, let me know. This is, you know, it really is your your deal, guys. It's your deal. You're the ones who, uh, you know, benefit from hitting a sub goal. What? What? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I was I was not expecting that whatsoever, dude. What? Wait, what? What? So, what kind of benefit would you like to see as a sub goal? You see what I mean? And it's hilarious. I hear silly shit all the time. That's not very viable, or that I know is a joke. You know, what would you guys seriously want a sub to get? That's what I want to hear. All right, that's what I need to know. The way I'm approaching the retrospective events is. Let us do them at a pace that they don't get stale. And I, I feel that if I did them every month, they would definitely get stale. Um, what I would say is maybe at the, at the most frequently every other month, okay? That's the most frequently. Um, but I actually feel that maybe, you know, every, every two to three months makes sense to maybe four of them a year, something like that. And I think it makes sense because if you alternate sub-goals, like one of the sub-goals is retrospective event. <laughs> every single time I've had that, we've hit it. Every single time we've had a sub-goal for a retrospective event, we've hit the sub-goal. So it's obvious you guys like the retrospective events, right? Um, so, yeah, I think maybe every other month. But the thing is, again, I do rely heavily on your guys' input. So what I would say is, please, guys, if we're going to do this again, you got to submit your suggestions for what you want to see me watch back on those. Because I probably had about 20 to 30 people who maybe submitted suggestions, and we went through it. And I'll be honest, yes, the, the retrospective event was good, but I feel it could have been a lot better if we had more suggestions. You know what I mean? Professional fart sniffer. Oh, has sent me five dollars and says George Bush did 7-Eleven and it was a nine to five job. Well, there you go. Professional fart sniffer is the top tipper of the day. Let's get him up there. And so, Bad Bunny did a couple of cheers. First one was, I bought some of your merch and then can I wear your merch on stream to promote you? You can do whatever you want. Once you buy my merch, you could burn it. You could uh, give it away. You could re-gift it to someone. You could, I mean, how awesome would that be on someone's birthday? You give them a nice, you know, Dark Side Phil shirt. I'm sure that's what everyone's looking for, right? Everyone. Put, have some Dark Side Phil merch in your life. It'll brighten your day, right? Um, you can wear it on your street. You can do whatever you want. Thank you for buying it. Thank you for supporting. I appreciate that. My dad is the BTK. Cheered. And uh, this is really stupid, and I'm not going to read it. Bob Roach cheered. And he says, Phil, the frog emo spam has gone out of hand. I cannot. Read the chat, though, sometimes. Well, the good news is that the frog spam is under control. Every once in a while, we let the frogs loose, and they hop about the stream chat, and they have their way, and there's nothing you can really do about it when you get a, a plague of frogs. Every once in a while, you gotta put up with the, the froggy rain, okay? 
However, I feel that it is it is under control. It does not completely overwhelm the stream chat. Okay. I'm the lol cow. <laughs> nice bottle crunch. Vault boy took me a dollar. He says, when you say that streaming is a demanding job and you get no downtime, do you not consider these gaming streams to be as such? Thank you in advance. Uh, no, this is my job. This isn't downtime. This is my job. You know, I have to put out an entertaining stream for people. It's work. This is my job, and it is about making money. I can't wait for the money! It's not just me picking my butt and playing a game casually. Here's the difference between what I do and what the normal person does when they play a game. When a normal person plays a game, they come home from their job or school, and this is how they unwind. They probably get a drink or a snack or whatever. They sit down with no set schedule of, oh, I need to do this in a certain time frame because people are waiting to watch me. And they sit down and they play a game casually, and this is how they relax, right? There's zero pressure for them to turn on a stream. There's zero pressure for them to put out a certain amount of content. There's zero pressure for them to entertain an audience and interact with people. Not to say that some people don't do that for fun. They do, and they maybe find it relaxing. But there's a difference between, okay, I'm doing this as a thing to unwind versus, okay, I'm doing this because, yeah, it's fun, but I also need to pay bills. You know what I mean? Very big difference. And... I totally 100% agree with you, Vault Boy, that my job is one of the best jobs on the planet. I love doing what I do for a living. I love the interaction. I love enjoying video games that were my hobby ever before they came my job. So doing this for a living is a, a, a dream come true. I may, be, I may be living month to month, paycheck to paycheck, begging for fucking tips and shit on stream for the rest of my life. And I love it. I love doing this for a living. Don't get me wrong, but at the same time, there is an elephant, an element, excuse me, an elephant. Apparently there's an elephant too, but there's an element of stress, of responsibility that comes in when you're doing it and this is your job, right? Um, I got to be here to stream every day. I have to. If I don't stream six days out of the week, I can't make ends meet and pay my bills. Um, that's a lot of stress versus, oh, if I come home from work today and I play a game, great. If I don't have time, well, not a big deal, right? See what I mean? It's different, you know? It's just like anything, just like anything you do. As a hobby, and then you turn it into a living. A lot of people get to do you know, get, get, get different ideas of things they can do, and it ch kind of changes stuff. All right. Bad Bunny cheered. It says most viewers do not understand the demands of streaming. To be honest, it's nearly impossible to explain. I don't think it's actually nearly impossible to explain. I just think that that people who don't do this want to believe that this is like some kind of an amazing stress-free dream job, and they aspire because they want to do it. Right. When they see someone who can make a living streaming or making content on YouTube, they're like, man, that's the dream. That's what I want to do. They don't want to hear that it's a grind. They don't want to hear that it's a, t a ton of time constraints and a crunch and that there's a lot of stress and responsibility behind it. They just want to believe that it's like some crazy-ass, like, paradise fantasy, you know? It's just like any other job. No. Fuck you. You're a liar. There's a lot of stuff attached to it that makes it stressful. Um, but again, I'm certainly not downplaying the fact that it's fun as hell. I'm just saying... It's, it's, you know, there is stress and things attached to it that makes it very different from it being an unwinding style stream. You know what I mean? The streams that are the most unwinding for me are the ones where it's just a chill. Like, I play MLB. Who cares if I fucking do anything good in MLB, right? I can just chill and talk with you guys. But when I am actually have a responsibility to play a game at a level where you guys want to watch, or like Code Vein today, I have to, like, try to not suck if I can. If, I, if the entire stream today is me sucking and dying at Code Vein and not even beating anything... You guys aren't gonna aren't gonna like it. You want to see progress, right? So there's always pressure. There's always pressure. I'm the worst gamer on the planet. Phil's the worst gamer. Phil doesn't deserve popularity. Phil's a, a shithead who is never good at anything. Um. Oh, hold on. Phantom Fuzz is shoot again. He says it seems unhealthy the amount of work you do. You take any holidays off? I know you work Memorial Day. Uh. You know it's true. I work a ton. My job is playing video games, so I don't really overexert myself. So I hate to tell you this. This is a real job, and it actually is one of the more challenging, if not the most challenging job I've ever had in my life. I'm very sedentary in my lifestyle. Laziness. A neat is someone who's like a no life. Not in education, employment, or training is what neat stands for. <clears throat> okay. Whatever that is. Why do you think I was laid off from my job, you know, in 2010? Recently, the only holiday I took off was, well, here's the thing. I was going to probably take Christmas Day off, but I ended up being so sick Christmas week that I couldn't work at all. Um, no, I, don't, I didn't take my birthday off. Uh, I don't really take holidays off. I have to work every day that I can uh, to make ends meet. That's just the situation I'm in. So. 
me, like, as I've told you guys, my, my long-term goals here are hopefully within a few years, I can get myself out of the dire financial straits I'm in and get to a point where I don't have to work as much because then I don't have to stream as much. I can go get a, maybe a nine to five job somewhere else and balance that with streaming so that I don't have as much crazy ass time constraint stress in my life. But that's, you know, who knows what's going to happen? I don't know. Okay. Burn in hell, Burnell. And now I'm going to burn in hell for the rest of eternity because of it. You can't change who you are, I guess. Hell is a place where it's very hot. There's, you know, it's torturous conditions. Fire, hail, brimstone. Uh, you know, your, your body is being ripped apart by demons who are shoving red hot pokers up your rectum. Not a nice place. Okay. What pasta do you prefer? I prefer a penne. Oh! Easy to eat. Oh! Phil's a faggot. Phil's fat. Phil's a loser. Phil's a beggar. Phil's a racist. Phil's a scammer. DSP's a pedophile. DSP is a thief. DSP is a greedy fuck. This guy's a bitch. I have a micro penis. <laughs> Alright, I'm not dead, but I swear to god I wish I fucking was.